Hey guys, it's YouTube Halion. Before we get started on today's video, I just want to tell you about the new membership program we have here on YouTube. It allows you to subscribe and directly support me through YouTube for $2.99 a month. You get access to emotes and comments, and you get badges based on how many months that you've been a member. And you get priority reply in comments if you'd like to leave comments for me, which you should. Uh, so if you're interested in just helping support the channel and support me and allow me to keep doing this for a long time, go ahead and join up if you don't mind. Otherwise, no worries. Enjoy the content. No pressure there. And uh, that's it. Enjoy the video, and I'll check you guys later. And subscribe if you haven't already, would you? All right, guys. I'll see you later. Thanks. So I have to get in the mode of actually really explaining things. Obviously, this is for people who are trying to get their first win ever, potentially. I would not recommend doing the sword, but let's say you just haven't saved up the shield, or maybe you did unlock the shield, but you're just not enjoying it yet. We don't have an aspect here, technically. Like, we're using aspect of Zag uh, here, but it's not upgraded or unlocked, so we get no bonus from that. I have Skelly's Tooth fully upgraded. That's probably the first keepsake I'd recommend for a new player anyway. Here's the mirror one more time, really quickly. And there's really no choices here. We don't have the inverse mirror unlocked or anything. I can't even reset the mirror until it's fully unlocked. So there's nothing else I can really do to make it any more difficult uh, for us. Now, I might not win. To go to work. I might not win. It's true. This can actually be quite difficult, I'd say. All right. So whatever you get first, totally random. We don't know. I think this is actually kind of scripted for Demeter or something. Now, Mistral Dash is a bad boon. And it's straight up never going to be Mistral Dash, to be honest. It probably has to be the attack, but it's not. that's also not very good. I'm kind of thinking I want to do Crystal Beam, which on its own is also a bad boon. But at least it doesn't get in the way of the build, necessarily. It... There is potential to find some cheese, but we're not going to have control over it. You know? Um, Crystal Beam does disable Boiling Blood, the mirror perk where if you lodge it inside of an enemy, the, your cast inside an enemy, they take, take, they take additional damage. So yeah, this is actually kind of difficult, to be honest. Um... Crystal Beam is sort of like this fringe, like maybe we'll find Artemis, we'll be able to get a really good duo boon that kind of carries us. Or do we settle and take an attack, but I'm worried that we'll just uh, die uh, in the long term for this. Like it'll feel fine for now to take the attack, but it's not gonna go well, I think. 40% is one of the lowest modifiers you can have on the attack. The chill effect is okay, but not great. I'm actually gonna do Crystal Beam here. It's freezing. I think we either got to hold out for a better attack. I don't believe we have privilege status. We do not. So that doesn't matter. Hey, Artemis A. Crystal Beam does kind of work as long as you don't have, like, Force Overtime on. There are some duo boons. There's one duo boon that makes Crystal Beam actually very, very good. Otherwise, Crystal Beam is very weak, generally, I'd say. All right, so we kill the enemies. We can use a plethora of attacks. Generally, with the sword, Titan Lights on, on, so I'm gonna take my time here. This is your attack pattern when you're using the sword. Either Zag Sword or Nemesis Sword, basically. Dash attack twice. Special. Rinse and repeat. Get used to this attack pattern. This is the optimal DPS output. You do not want to do this. This is bait. 100% bait. The normal attack combo is total bait. It's bad. It's not helpful. It locks you into place too much. It makes you very vulnerable. There are some fringe cases, depending on the hammers you get, where you might want to do something kind of like it. Uh, we'll get to those when we see them, but do not use this. So all you got to do to accomplish this, just mash, attack, and dash at the same time, and you get it. It's no problem. Okay. So we got Darkness, we got Chaos, they got a Nectar. I don't think we have the upgrades where Nectar and Darkness actually give us bonus effects yet. So you would just do Chaos here still. Chaos is kind of scary because of... Uh... 
I can get the egg here. Not that I'm gonna use it, but... Just because you lose health. We don't have rolls to make anything better either. Okay. A lot of times when you take a Chaos Boon... Um... How do you do dash attacks properly consistently? I always take lots of damage because I can't control the direction well or I end up using a normal attack somehow. That can happen, especially depending on the hammers you take. If you try to dash attack more than the number of dashes you have, that'll happen a lot. Uh, you just need to know how many dashes you actually have. You start off with two. Um, so you just have to only attempt to do that, then use the special to fill in the time gap before you can use your dashes again. If you keep mashing the buttons, then it's just gonna start off with a with an attack combo. Uh, if you're using mouse and keyboard, things are a little bit different to be quite honest. Thrustmaster overlay so people can see your inputs for reference? I guess so. I'm not supposed to, but that's okay. I'm sure they'll be fine with it. This dash attack vice versa. I, I feel like I hit them at the exact same time and it tends to work. If you're using mouse and keyboard, things might be different. Not supposed to, why? I'm supposed to be doing challenge content when I show the overlay in particular, but that's okay. I'm sure they'll be fine with it. It's helpful for everyone. All right. So a lot of times when you pick up a Chaos Boon, you really just, half the time, you're just taking something that isn't gonna get you killed. I think. None of these are particularly painful, so that's good. So then it becomes, which one is gonna help us the most? If we wind up with a cast build, the extra cast probably helps the most. This is probably the weakest in terms of actually giving us more power. More backstab, it's okay. 64% might kind of sound like a lot, but it's not gonna feel like a lot, I think at the end of the day. An extra cast can feel like a lot. I think this is fine. I have 227 gold. It doesn't matter what I take here, because I don't get bonuses from taking anything. More beams? Who knew my overexplained run would become crystal beam? Can you see? Okay, just making sure. And it's properly showing. Yeah, I, I, I hit the buns at the exact same time. All right, jammy jams. Gems are probably, a, if, especially once you've unlocked all of the the weapons, you might not want to be collecting keys as fast. Anyway, you might want more gems. It's only when we start getting armored enemies that things are going to get difficult. Armored enemies don't get staggered. Like this enemy right here from attacks. Man, that was a classic video I did. Okay, so we got Ares. That's bad news, unfortunately. I'll tell you why in a second. If you're doing, so if this is one of your first runs, you might want to spend the gold here on this. Topping off here, you could, you could. Uh, I'm actually gonna conserve our gold in this instance. This is, this is incredibly cheap and it's kind of hard to think of reasons not to take it. You know, cause 10 gold, it's literally the cheapest thing that you can find in these wells. I don't think any of those are gonna directly help us in this run. And that's going to be the main focus of this run. It's not going to be to upgrade our meta status, but more so just to win in the run. So Ares, we don't really want to see Ares, but obviously we have no control over it, so it doesn't really matter. Because the sword lends itself to... better to the percentage increases, such as Demeter, Artemis, Aphrodite. Uh, not as much Poseidon. I don't think Ares is bad here though. In fact, when you're new to the game Anyone else? and you don't have the aspects leveled up and things like that, it might actually be a good idea to take a high level Doom. Now, unfortunately, uh, that didn't happen either. Um, okay, so it's not gonna be Blood Frenzy right away. I can tell you that. It's a, it's a waste, I'd say. Uh, it's just not enough. It would probably only trigger in a couple of fights, and you might never get those Death Defiances back, and it's just, yeah, it's nothing good, I'm afraid. Curse of Vengeance is okay. 
It's fine. You you'd you'd hope not to get hit, but obviously if you're new to the game, you're gonna get hit. I'm trying to think if I was new to the game, if I was watching a new player play right now, what would I tell them to take? You know what I mean? It's sort of between Blade Dash and Curse of Vengeance. Blade Dash is alright. It's okay. It's nothing special. Um I think I think I don't take Blade Dash just because so many other better boons can could fit into that slot. Uh honestly. So that's why that's why I'm not gonna take it. You'd rate Mistral Dash above Blade Dash? Wow. I don't know if I would do that. I don't know I don't know if I'm that adventurous. All right, so chaos is over. That's lovely. We got more Demeter coming. That's not great. There is one boon that would complement Crystal Beam that we can get right now. I guess technically two. If we get a high level attack, we'd probably be willing to take that now. I kind of just didn't want to settle for a 40%. I might take Drunken Dash over Mistral Dash, to be honest. Oh, that is cold. <laughs> oh man, the the game's not making it making it easy here. Uh, I'm trying to think. Frozen Touch is pretty bad. So, okay, Frozen Touch is a decent utility boon. Actually, because you get hit and it applies 10 stacks of chill. That's actually kind of good when you think about it. Uh, just applying 10 stacks of chill and making your foes that much slower, it's it's pretty good. It does, the damage output is obviously so little it doesn't matter. This attack is still quite weak. Crop, 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 crop. I thought, oh, okay. Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to think again. I guess we got to lean into the beams now, to be honest. The thing is, though, getting some chill would actually be helpful now. Because if we're going to lean into the beams, chilling foes and making them walk and perform moves slower would be very helpful because the beams are slow. I guess we'll do this. Some people might think this is a, an easy decision. I think uh, I think a lot of new players are baited into trials pretty often. Uh, here, there's I I usually lean the other way. If you got enough money to buy a boon, the shop is ten, typically better. You're not going to lose health in the shop. You don't have another chance to spend that gold for a little while. Yes, if there are mandatory shops later on, but sometimes you'd rather take a free item over a shop. This is a mid shop. We call it a mid shop because each biome, oops, sorry, each biome has a mid shop and an end shop. A mid shop is somewhere it it appears somewhere in the middle of the biome. Chamber nine is the middle of Tartarus, technically middle end. Uh, the last chamber in Tartarus is twelve. That's the last chamber that you can have an enemy encounter. There's some weird exclusions there, but we're not going to get into that. So if you're in chamber twelve already, see so how it says chamber nine in the top right right now. And you might see a shop and, let's say, a palm on the other door. You say you get two options, shop and palm. The shop is guaranteed to appear if you're already in chamber 12. That would be chamber number 13. Um, if you know, if you are in chamber 12, or if you just know you already had a shop earlier in Tartarus or Acidel or whatever biome that you're in, you know that the final shop, you know that that's going to be the final shop. That also means what other, whatever other doors are being offered... Those items are free. You get them for free. There's no enemy fights. There's no encounters. You can just get them for free, basically. Um, so the easiest way to remember that usually is just, did you already get offered a shop or not when in the biome? Because it's harder to memorize the chamber numbers, to be honest. Hey, Farty. Uh, it's easier to kind of remember, like, oh, I already shot, saw a shop in Tartarus, so blah, 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 blah. I think it's actually mostly correct to take the shop here. I don't really want... Hey, Tade. 
I don't necessarily want boons from these two gods that much anyway. Yes, there are things that could be helpful. But I think the shop, A, I'm not going to take damage in the shop. B, you could get other things that I want more to be offered, namely Artemis. And C, I don't, I don't have a C plan, actually. I don't have a C. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, I think, in my first overexplained run, thought it was very wrong to take, the sh take a shop over something like that. They thought it was extremely wrong. Because their argument is that you'll just see more shops later where you could spend the gold. Um, the problem with the argument is that you can just choose not to take those shops too. You know what I mean? If you don't, if you get, if you encounter a shop versus something else and you don't have enough gold, then you probably don't take it. You know what I mean? But the bottom line with the shop is it could contain anything and it's uh, literally 100% safer. Trials are very dangerous. They are. You can lose a lot of health in a trial. Okay, so we got Athena Hermes. We don't need the health, so obviously we're not going to be buying that. We're only five health short. So Athena is very good here, I think, in general, as a new player. Being able to deflect projectiles is just very, very good. Unfortunately, we didn't get much use out of Athena here, sadly. Uh, Hermes can have a lot of dud boons. There's a lot of boons that you just don't necessarily want or need uh, from Hermes. So I wouldn't really recommend paying for Hermes as a new player very often. We did not get what we especially wanted, which was the dash. If there was a high rarity attack, I'd probably consider that too. Bronze skin is a pretty weak boon. I would not recommend taking it most of the time. Holy shield, it's okay if nothing else useful is there, but typically Athena has something else. I think we fell in the special here. Again, just having a way to control a deflect will be quite helpful in the long run, at least. All right. We're still, this doesn't really change our attack pattern all that much. We do have four casts now. The beams happen to be the weakness to these hands here because they mostly stand still, especially if you're not near them. Slash, they move very slowly. All right, so this one's pretty straightforward. You want to generally pick up a hammer. We are starting to lean into a more cast-oriented build where hammers are not going to be as important. I don't need to pause here. I apologize. Um, uh, it wouldn't be 100% wrong to take health here, though, at the same time. And the reason for that is hammers tend to be very hit or miss. And especially as a new, new player, you might not know what hammers are best. And there are many hammers out there that sound good, but are not good. I think is the issue. There are many hammers out there that could actually make your build worse if they are taken. So I don't think it's strictly a bad idea to take the health there. However, I would still recommend taking the hammer because the more hammers you try and things of that nature, the more experimentally you get, the more you get to understand what works for you uh, and what works in general. Hey, Dunk, Dash Nova. <laughs> we actually got three pretty bad options here, to be honest. Uh, I know, so I hear a lot of new players talk about Curse Slash and how they like Curse Slash and how it maybe carried their first win and stuff like that. I don't know if I'd recommend it, though. I don't know if I'd recommend it. Uh, I would never recommend Cruel Thrust for anything ever in your life. This hammer is a total trap. They put, they slapped big numbers onto this hammer for absolutely no purpose. Um, it's just, so the thrust only counts toward the third strike of the regular attack combo. And you don't want to use that. You don't want to use it. You just don't. This does not count towards dash strikes. It is different. That is different. LOL plus 200% damage. Yeah, I know. It's big numbers, but it doesn't do anything. The downs, the quote unquote downside of the double Nova is not much of a downside, to be honest. Double Nova is not a horrible boon. I mean, sorry, a horrible hammer. It's just on the mediocre side, I'd say. Curse Slash is, as you can imagine, quite cursed. That minus 60% health 
is actually quite painful. <laughs> um, you, could, I, I recommend experimenting with this, but I don't think we want to do it. Especially if we wind up leaning even further into the cast build that we kind of have going on here. Um, I would say that Curse Slash would most likely be bad. I don't believe you get health back. Uh, I don't believe you get health back with Curse Slash if you use a Dash Strike. Right? I'm not positive about that. There are some, some weird things in this game like that where you think that this would work, but it doesn't. You do not. Yeah, so that's sort of a trap there. So in other words, this attack that I keep telling you all to use a lot, you would not be getting that two health back. You'd be getting scammed 100% of the time. I wouldn't normally recommend paying for Light of Ixian, but honestly, this is only 25 gold. And it'll probably help out in the first couple chambers of Asphodel. It's kind of wasted in the boss fight, but that's okay. If this was like a speed run or just a casual run of my own, I might have bought in that Chaos Gate. We already didn't have enough mo money to buy a boon here, so this is okay. Guessing Electo. So I'm actually eating my words here because we got forced into a one exit shop. That was, we... Turned to us already, Zagreus. And still you're going to keep battling your way out, past me and everything up there. Why? So there's a lot to explain when it comes to like rooms and the layouts of biomes and how many chambers in and all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to explain it all, but generally you're going to be offered a shop. Generally, there are there are exceptions. You're going to be offered a shop, a shop twice in each biome. Now, if there's only one exit and you're in the final room of a biome, then you're going to be forced into a shop. So I ate my words because I said that, you know, you you might be able to get take something for free instead of that. That did not happen, but. I played the odds, and that's okay. All right, so we can deflect these. I forgot I had double Nova. Not, I think one of the other big things about Hades is not every single upgrade you pick up do you need to utilize. You know, if you don't find yourself doing, if you're not feeling it, you know, like if you, if you pick double Nova and it's just not like doing it for you, like it doesn't feel good, feels like you're just taking more damage trying to utilize it, then just don't use it. Take take things that work with your playstyle. If you're still trying to figure out your playstyle, just keep experimenting, I think. Alright. We do good. Sus beam placement. Oh, here we go. Rare crop coming in. All right. I'm just gonna. I don't even have Artemis's keepsake anyway. That's the god we want to see because we want to try to get a duo boon. Another chaos gate chat. I don't think so. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't recommend to a new player to take it. I am almost considering selling this. I'm not going to. That's enough Tartarus. In the bag. Yeah, we're doing from a fairly new save file dunk to try to imitate, uh, you know, someone who recently started the game. Unfortunately, my mirror has a bit more upgrades than I think the average person would. Because you can't reset unless you unlock the whole mirror, but yeah. Put the beams down. I don't know if there's much to say about the beams. Like, I can manipulate this enemy to drop in front of them, but it's really not a big deal. A lot of people worry too much about potential damage and not about actual survival, I think. Bro, you could have been doing so much more damage if you placed your beams better. It's like, it's not, it doesn't matter, you know. You just take whatever you need for your meta here. You're gonna do a fresh file to credit today for the content release. Oh, dunk. 
Don't, don't get a PB. Don't, or rather, don't break the record. We need Aramis's attack to get the duo. I think the dash and the call technically all work. I think it all works. If we do get that, then if we get the duo eventually, that is. Oh my god, and still a natural chaos? You always want to look at all the chambers. Hmm. Hmm. He's saying. So, when you take a chaos gate, you take uh consistent damage to, to go in right you also might get something that forces you to take damage depending on things you get usually pretty avoidable um i wouldn't i don't i feel like i don't really want hermes still because i don't know where this build is going quite yet I think even if we do go cast though i probably wouldn't necessarily want to get take something like flurry cast from her Hermes, but yeah. I'm actually kind of feeling like gold here. To make sure we can afford plenty at the middle shop and stuff like that. The thing is, Chaos can't make us very powerful. Chaos is more supplemental to the build, usually, most of the time, than it is like you need Chaos to make the build happen. So since we don't really know where we're going, I mostly want to make sure we have all the abilities to uh, make purchases and things of that nature. I know we already had over 150 gold, but I kind of want to make sure we have even more than that. We want to maximize of, uh, our odds of seeing the gods and being able to purchase boons from gods that we want to see. Hermes dodge is great. Hermes dodge is okay, I would say. It's fine. It's usually one of the good, like, good enough boons, I'd say. Side hustle is sort of a trap. Do I still need these? All right. We're not, like, Athena's dash would be nice, but it's not going to make the build again. So we're going to go to the shop. This is the middle shop. You know that's a mini boss, which means it also has increased boon rarity going to be offered because it had the little skull below it. Uh... Ask and ye shall receive. Little pog, little pog there. So we want Artemis because Artemis can... I don't think I have the codex unlocked, do I? I do not. We're gonna buy the health here. We could buy this. Okay, yeah, you might... Okay, this is, this is the big trap I think that can happen as a new player. See purple boon, take purple boon. That purple boon is a mistake. That purple boon is a mistake. Straight mistake. Right there. And it's hard to know because what does 15 damage mean to you as a new as a new player? You know, 15? Like, I think that's a lot of damage. I think this works. I think this will happen. You know, unfortunately, as a new player, you're just not going to know until you try it, really. It probably won't kill the run, but it won't be very effective, is what I'd say. You w Zeus works best uh, if you were to put Zeus onto an attack boon. Or a special boon. It works best for something that strikes rapidly. And I mean much more rapid than, you know, uh, a sword with two dash attacks at a time. Uh, this is not rapid enough. So like the rail or the fist or certain other builds with certain hammers are best if you're going to take Zeus's attack, basically, or special. So then it comes down to thunder dash or lightning reflexes. After you dash, just before getting hit, a bolt strikes a nearby foe. This comes into a lot of play where you want to make a choice that doesn't hurt your odds of something else. Is Flurry slash Zeus attack good? It's pretty good. That works. That one works. Uh, so I'm thinking it's not Thunder Dash, and here's why. We're about to take a boon from Artemis. We really want to make sure it's a core boon so that we can get the dual boon crystal clarity. That's the dual boon between Artemis and Demeter that it powers up our crystal beams substantially. So, if we take the dash, 
here's what's going to happen. There, it increases the odds that Artemis won't even offer us a core boon. A core boon is attack, special, cast, dash, call. It's pretty unlikely I wouldn't get a core boon offered, but it does decrease the odds. It also means, let's say we take Thunder Dash now, right? Then we get Artemis's attack. If we see another Artemis boon after that, there's a chance we'll be offered Crystal Clarity. There's also a chance, unfortunately, that we could be offered Lightning Rod. So here's the thing, though. As a new player, Lightning Rod is actually amazing. Lightning Rod is legitimately amazing. I actually talked myself into this. I forgot. I was leading into don't take the dash, but then I realized then I remembered that Lightning Rod is amazing as a new player. And if we get it offered, then you'll just have to see. Again, our odds of getting a Corboon here are slightly diminished, though. It can't be that low, though, right? So this is one of the mini bosses, Barge of Death. One thing to know I did that I didn't bring up is that however many mini boss configurations. What is Amir doing here? Uh, however many mini boss configurations there are in a, in a biome, that's how many times you can be offered the mini boss. That's kind of confu a confusing sentence, I'll admit. Oh, I missed what Amir actually said. Uh, so you know you can skip. I'm actually going to gift Artemis here. That's actually very important here. We can now get Artemis' keepsake. Lady Artemis, you honor me. I can't believe I was here to hear Halion say Lightning Rod is amazing. Damn it, Amir. Everyone, big welcome to a Miracle Studio Director of Supergiant Games, creator of Hades, Transistor, Bastion, Pyre, and so much more. Hugs and kisses, Amir. Hope the family's well. Hope the team's well. Um, okay. So let me finish that thought there. So you can be offered the mini boss as many times as there are possibilities of different types of mini bosses. Asphodel has three different types of mini bosses that can be offered. Witches, the barge, which you just saw, power couple fight, which is a uh, big stompy head, and uh, and fake Dusa, basically. Uh, Tartarus also has three iterations. The, I don't even know what you call them. The elite bombers, the sneak, and the doomstone. Some of these aren't unlocked until a little bit later in your save file. Elysium only has two, butterfly ball and minotaur. So that means that you can skip in Asphodel here. You could skip two mini boss offers and still get offered it again later on, basically. Is the best way I can describe that. Because you do you generally want to take a mini boss in each biome. You do. Elysium. The Minotaur is such a tough mini boss fight in Elysium. There might be an argument to say that you don't want to do it. A touch, just a touch though. Come up with more um but normally you do want to. I need to expose Mr. Dan the Helian of State in horrendous actions against Guardian Dog of the Underworld. I quote his man, I'm not saying we should kill the dog, but if it was faster, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> he did say that? Oh, I did say that. If it's faster, what can I say? All right, let's move on from this. Uh, <laughs> so we obviously want Artemis' attack. Artemis has the most powerful attack and special boons for most weapons, uh, especially with the sword. This is going to be the best case scenario uh, for us. I'm sure you get told this a ton, but your videos are tremendous and they've helped make me a much better player. Thank you so much. Still fairly new, still learning, but wanted to send some love. Thank you, Tenork. I really appreciate that. I'm glad to help. I'm, I'm, that always makes me feel good uh, to hear I can help, help someone. So critical hits are extremely powerful in Hades. Uh, see how critical says plus 200%? You might interpret that as you do double damage with a critical. You do three times damage. You do three times damage with a critical hit. 15%, not super high. 
and 29% uh, extra attack damage. Also not super high, but the criticals make it worth it. Just take it from me. A lot of people might make the argument, Aphrodite is technically more DPS output, blah, 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 all this stuff. It's not a big deal. It's really not. And I think the bottom line is the supplemental boons you can get from Artemis are just so much more powerful. Uh, like, there's crit synergy out there that exists that just pushes Artemis so far over the edge that it's really not worth discussing, I feel. Uh, Artemis, Artemis just very strong uh, when it comes to these things. The only time you would not want to take an Artemis boon on, say, an attack or special, if it's a low damage rapid hit. I'm thinking, you know, you're using the rail for the first time and you take Artemis' attack because Artemis has never steered you wrong. That could wind up being a mistake. It's probably not going to destroy the run, but it's probably not going to feel good. No to that. Okay, so we already saw one shot, so that's how we know this is the final shot. So this is what I was talking about earlier. We know this is the final shot in Asphodel, because we already saw one earlier. Um, so the left means it's free. You don't pay for anything, you don't fight for any enemies, you just get it for free. Simple as that. Now, I'm trying to think. Oh wait, I only have 107 gold. Never mind, there's not even a choice. Never mind. Never mind. Demos, thank you for the 100 biddies. Not even a choice. 107 gold, all that can afford us is a palm. There's no point in going. All aboard. Yeah, you really want... If we had 150 gold, I 100% would have gone to the shop. Right, Dunk? 100%. Because if we got offered Artemis or, or Demeter, it would increase our power level so substantially that... 25 health would look like a pittance. It would look like nothing. All right, what's there to say about the Learny fight? I realize I didn't say a single thing about the sister fight. Learny fight is very well scripted here. Uh, you always get it. You always get the same number of heads and things of that nature, but the different colored heads do different things. This green one summons summons as. Come back again, please. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, Amir's gonna witness the cursed clown content. So this this learny head with the the additional horns and sort of the the blueness to it is a stompy head. This is the most dangerous head for a melee player. Are you my dad? I would say. <laughs> Brago, thank you for the gift sub. Dimas, thank you for the prime. Oh! So you could, we could be playing it a bit more safe here, but just remember there, there is a fountain after the boss fight. Ah, okay. So you, you will restore some health. This is about the threshold, though I'd say. We could just turtle this out, cast the beams, and just hide in the corner and try to wait it out, basically, here. So yeah, you could just stay far away. This And this learny won't be much of a threat. You just gotta dodge the red circles. Like, if you're nervous, you could just keep doing this, basically. And it's not even that slow, to be honest. Let the beams do the work, you know? Boom. Andy, thanks for the gifts up to Amir. Again. All right, very good. We now have heroic beams. Bounty claimed, because I've never won with a sword, apparently. Mm, wow, that was sort of like no I health. Love you, Twitch chat. Oh, come back again, please. I guess it's an upgrade to get much uh, health restored, huh? Uh, from the wells, I guess. Okay, some interesting decisions here. So here's the problem. We started with Lucky Tooth as the keepsake. If I take it off now, we can't put it back on. So I could I could put on like Artemis's and try to force out that dual boon. And using the God keepsakes is incredibly powerful to manipulate the build that you want to get. 
it is actually the best way to play the game with a level of certainty. If all you're trying to do is grind out wins... I built you Twitch chat. Oh, come back again, please. <laughs> if all you're trying to do is grind out wins, the best way to do it is to abuse the god keepsakes to get specific, very strong duo and or legendary builds, basically. That is the best way to do it. Now, the issue again is because I started with the tooth, I can't take it off unless I don't plan to ever wear it again. So we're just going to move on and just pray we get lucky, basically. Cyan, Zarkog, thank you guys for the gifties. Um, so here, Eye of Lamia is the best health health value, I think, that can be offered here most of the time. You could technically get unlucky, and you get you get kind of garbage from it. Uh, it's the best, best health value per gold, I'd say, though, generally. So I, I definitely recommend that, even if you're just missing a tiniest amount of gold. It lasts for three encounters not just chambers so if there's if there's a chamber without an enemy encounter it doesn't count so it's good i think we do take the yarn here i would not normally uh recommend the yarn half the time i think it's kind of baited where people think the yarn is the right choice too often this is probably going to push us to where we will not be able to afford a boon a large portion of the time when we get to the mid shop in elysium i still think it's worth it there's two duo boons and three gods that would actually be helpful uh, here, generally. Um, but again, I feel like because of the denial of being able to buy anything in the mid shop, that's what's really going to push this where I don't know if it's actually a good idea. Grim, welcome back. Thank you for the seven months. All right. Yarn is actually so good, Dan. It's good, but not, not when you're low on gold is my main thing. Um, that's why I wouldn't, I don't know, if we weren't looking for that duo boon, I wouldn't recommend it. The yarn increases the odds of you seeing duo boons. We do not take Athena here. Number one, Athena doesn't have, she has deadly reversal, which would be nice. That's a duo boon between Artemis and Athena, and that's a good boon. That's a good duo boon. But it's not going to make or break us. It's not going to make or break us. What's really going to make or break us is something from Artemis or Demeter to try to get that Crystal Clarity to a boon I was talking about. And I don't want to waste the yarn on Athena. Plus, we could use some gold. That might look crazy. That probably looks like a crazy choice right now. Does it not? Again, it's about planning a lot of times in Hades. And it's hard to do that if you don't know the builds. You know? So, I wonder if I'm kind of going about this the wrong way, because if you're a new player, you're not going to know about Crystal Clarity. You know? But I guess that that's what it's about, though. Okay. Unfortunately, you cannot manipulate hammers at all. You get what you get, you know? This doesn't matter. More long spears. Okay, okay, okay. I saw someone ask, is any DLC planned for Hades? Can someone add a miracles, please? Can we get an official response today? A day of celebration? Calling them out? Damn right I'm calling them out! What can I say? I'll call them out all day, baby. Ooh, another yarn. That's kind of crazy. It's not totally crazy. When I was starting out, I did try to plan exactly for the builds I saw in your videos. I know, it's tempting, is it not? This one, I'd say no. I'd probably say no to this too, Dunk. You should probably look at the doors first. Make sure you get the gold pots. Getting the first palm on Crystal Beam would be very helpful. You need to know how many palmable boons you have. We currently have five. The attack, the special, the cast, the dash, and the curse of vengeance. Not every boon is palmable. I won't get too far into it, but this is sort of what happens, you know. It's okay, you can learn as you go, basically. Um, so we have a three out of five chance of palming the cast. Huh. It's kind of questionable. I think the safe play is just... Uh, the cast, you're not... I don't... 
even if we did get the cast, I don't know if it's a big enough difference to feel. So I think I'd normally recommend someone just to take the health here, honestly. Again, I try to put myself in the shoes. If I was watching a new player play the game right now, what would I tell them to take? And I'd probably tell them to take this. All right, since Amir has abandoned us, uh, just like every woman in my life, uh, uh, the devs have officially said, stated numerous times that they have no planned DLC for Hades. And uh, that that's where they're keeping it, basically. Nothing else has been said. Does that mean they'll change their minds? Maybe. Haley and I have a wife? Oh, yeah. I mean, I love my wife. I'm glad I bought the Eyes of Lamia. Okay, so that's the first mini boss. It's Ares. We do not want Ares. And we got the middle shot being offered here. Very straightforward choice. We go this way. Zag's coming to smash. No way. This isn't what we want to see. We really want... I keep pausing. I apologize. Um, we really want to see Demeter Artemis. I'm inching. I'm inching. Oh, no. Oh, no, chat. That's bad. No Artemis, no Demeter. Big yikes. We don't have any Hermes yet. It might be good to use the yarn on the on Hermes. We could try to get the rod, but we there's a chance we'll get the rod from here anyway. I guess is what I'm thinking, you know? Because we're this is the last chance at the mini boss, because there's only two two possibilities. We don't want Ares anyway. So we're gonna go that way. We get higher rarity. There is this weird thing where apparently mini bosses have a decreased chance to show you dual boons. I don't really know why that's the case, but it's, I, I believe it's true. Yeah, lower dual chance mini boss. Do we, is there a logic behind that as to why it happens? Or is that, is it potentially it's just a bug? Sorry, I keep pausing. Bad speedrunning habit. I think we buy Hermes here. Zeus does have some good things, but we're about to get a Zeus boon, so I think I'm okay with this. I see. <laughs> ah! Oh boy. Hyper Sprint's a pretty good boon. Hyper Sprint's a pretty good boon. Uh, Swift Strike. In whatever the equivalent to additional special speed, I feel like half the time they're traps, and they don't really do much. It really it it varies so wild wildly between different builds, weapons, hammers, everything, everything. It just varies so differently between them all that most of the time, it, it, additional attack and special speed does not do a whole lot. Um, it does not make our change our dash strikes in the slightest. Uh, is what you need to know about it for the sword. Um, so why does cast speed matter? Good question. Good question. The truth is it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really do anything. I guess it's a fun factor is the thing, though. It's a fun factor. This, this will not help us win. This will not help us win. Or if it does, it's like 4%. Uh, it does on things like Zeus, Zeus cast. Uh, so for Crystal Beam, it literally does not matter. Uh, for this particular build, and for pretty much any cast build uh, with a base sword, practically, I'd say it wouldn't really matter. Yeah, like Zeus cast would be really good, huh, Dunk? But otherwise, I can't really think of anything. It, this is borderline useless. I shouldn't take it. I'm tempted to take it for the fun factor. I'm tempted to take it for the fun factor, but I shouldn't. It also opens up a Hermes Legendary. Hyper Sprint is really the option here. We take less damage right after sprinting. We also get to move faster for a short period, which is quite helpful just getting away from enemy attacks. Hermes Legendary, it's okay. It's not, e that's also not even that helpful of a boon 
for uh, Crystal Beam. All it does is make our casts automatically return to us when they fall to the ground. But we know exactly where the beams are going to be anyway. All right, very good. We got the easy mini boss here. Hermes Legendary is 1% chance though. It's that low? Damn. So things like that, I just don't know. No rod, chat. I'm sorry. No rod. What can I do? 1% without the mirror? That's crazy. It, this is pretty easy choice here. Your easiest, my hardest, I can't deal with the butterfly balls. It's a DPS check, 100%. 100% a DPS check, to be honest. Uh, it, there's really no way I can say, like, oh, just make sure you kill the butterfly ball first, because it's not that easy. It's just not that straightforward of a fight. It's still, I would call it easier than the Minotaur most of the time, but that's probably only true if you made all the right decisions along the way and chose the right build and things of that nature, you know what I mean? Um, it's something that can spiral out of control quickly. I would probably recommend just doing, outputting as much damage as possible, but it really depends on your mobility and the range of your build a lot. This is a pretty easy choice. Heaven's Vengeance, it's just not as good as the other choices. High Voltage, it's not generally good. Really, the main purpose of this boon, High Voltage, is to open up the Zeus Legendary. Now, we only apply Zeus via the dash, so I, high voltage is not very helpful. And getting the legendary by dashing, even if that did happen, still not that good. It would probably still would not equate to the amount of damage that you would get out of static discharge, aka jolted. Also, if you did have privilege status unlocked, this is a way that we could help us apply privilege status. Jolted is generally a very, very strong boon overall. And if you have a way to hit enemies... Uh... With lightning every now and again, it's almost never wrong to take, I'd say. So we got health versus hammer here. The decision actually got harder than the first time. Because we are leaning further and further into the cast build. Thus, the hammer becomes less and less important. 175 max health is pretty decent, though. The best hammer we could get now? It's probably still double edge. I'm going to say. Um, I can't think of anything else, though. I'm, I'm only going to discuss it if it's there. Really. Must sacrifice for the D-Edge. I'm thinking... Okay, again, I think... if you, Even if you... I was uh, trying to help a new player, I'd probably say take the hammer. Experience... Even if you get garbage offered, you get to experience what it feels like. You get to see something else in the game. <laughs> Louie! Thanks for the five gifties, friend. Appreciate. Classic bike. Dunk Lunks the, likes the five subs video. If only Dunk got to witness the 25er. <laughs> what was I saying? Welcome, Lucky. Ow, okay. I was reading chat. My own fault. Don't get hit by traps, chat. More dead cells. Dead cells kicked my ass. All right, we got some pretty bad options here. Well, they're not the worst. Not literally the worst. The temperature in my basement is 74 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 Celsius. Okay. Boarding slash is probably... I don't think unless you are doing a straight meme and hoarding gold purely for the purpose of getting a large amount of damage via hoarding slash, you would never take this hammer. Just cross it out. You're not going to take it. It's wrong. It's wrong, Chan, okay? And it should feel wrong. World Splitter is more of a... Boy, how do I explain World Splitter? It's not the worst thing ever, 
but it's kind of a, a pro con thing it's it's sort of you're, you're throwing away some defensives for more offense i would say uh and it works pretty well you get a lot of damage output but the problem is it's it leaves you really vulnerable by utilizing the dash strike so you can't use dash strikes in order to get the world splitter additional damage uh you can either dash strike or use world splitter which is just a normal chopping attack basically um i wouldn't recommend it for a new player you know uh i wouldn't recommend it for a new player yeah hoarding slash is very deceptive on how it applies the damage bonus it calc uh the game calculates all your damage bonuses everything else besides hoarding slash and then it tacks on that tiny minute amount of damage flat at the end on top of it so it's bad um th they call this the big chop because it's literally that 90 base damage is a lot in hades you need to know 90 is a lot that is a big number but it's too dangerous breaching slash is a nice middle of the road hammer it performs a job it's not super interesting it's not gonna make or break us but it's helpful it does something it's stripping enemies of armor quickly is actually quite strong oh boy we got a lot more talking to do here all of a sudden boy oh boy it's probably still the trial trials can be quite tempting bye amir have a nice day. Tell me about the DLC later. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, Amir. Don't don't leave yet. Hold on. Okay. Um Okay. I think people get too excited over trials. I think a lot of times it might not be correct to take, to be quite honest. Um, they are quite dangerous. Nevertheless, I think I still will do the trial. We still have a call wound to fill in. Either of their calls could be quite, quite good, I'd say. There's not a whole lot else I want from them, though. The important thing to know about trials is you cannot be offered duo boons. You can't be offered duo boons in trials. Straight up. Can't get them. Can't go. One thing that you can hope for, though, from them is to thin out the boon possibilities, thus improving your odds later on of getting dual boons. A palm would be very small. Even if we hit the cast, it would probably be small, honestly. Which god has an easier trial? I kind of feel like Athena does. The order can be important here. I think at this moment, it's not super important. Uh, the order we actually take them. Mostly concentrate on which one's more difficult, if you know. If you don't know, you just do what you can. Being as easier for sure. I, I think I agree with that. Welcome, fuck yes, thank you. Okay. I actually have a question for Dunk, probably. Or someone else in chat might be knowledgeable. Double strike, your lightning bolt effects have a chance to strike twice. Does jolted count as a separate lightning bolt? It says victim's next attack self-inflicts lightning damage that harms nearby foes. I'm being told, yes, it does. You can double strike on jolted. Double strike is a very powerful boon, especially if you already have Zeus's call. It also puts up the path to the legendary, but we probably shouldn't worry about that. Getting a 25% chance to double strike on Jolted, which deals 100-something damage, is probably pretty good. Plus, I wouldn't mind Athena's call. I think more defense would be fine here. There's not much else from Athena that we want, though, to be honest. But I don't mind it. If we filled in the call there... So my concern is if I filled in the call with Zeus there, then Athena would just really give me absolutely nothing. Athena, a lot of the supplemental boons are just kind of lackluster from Athena. I'm thinking like bronze skin. We, I guess we could have gotten proud bearing that improves our, our call uh, meter, which is okay. I'd probably say in that particular instance, at least. Uh, 
sure footing. Which isn't crazy as a news player to take. It's really not, obviously. But especially once you're out of Asphodel, you probably aren't thinking that hard about traps as much anymore. Well, that's not fair. He was impervious when I was trying to kill. I took a lot of damage in this room. Extra DVs are nice for beginners. Yes, that is sort of the main thing. Athena can really can really save a run. If you are down a Death Defiance, Athena can offer one back. It's very, very strong. Speaking of which. If you have full Death Defiances, then these do not offer you an additional one. Therefore, this is going to be pretty weak. They do still have a bonus effect, though. Death Defiance restores more health than usual. 10% additional health. Our max health is currently 175. So basically, we restore another 17, 18 health per Death Defiance. I think uh, Deathless Stand, the additional effect makes you impervious longer, is very weak. It's very weak. I would not take this unless you're missing a Death Defiance. And at that point, it becomes very worth it, though. But only at that point. I would rather take this than that right now. But I'm probably not going to take either. But purple, don't get distracted by the purples, chat. Uh, I'm not going to take either. I'm not exactly excited about Exposed here. But I think uh, the thing is, if you take one of these, then you can't get offered it later. So let's say I lose a Death Defiance to the hero's boss fight, right? And we get Athena offered in sticks. I want these to still be an option. I want these to potentially be offered by Athena later. So I want to leave those as options there. I think there's something over here. No? I'm um, crazy. I'm losing it, chat. We got our palm finally. I think this is our first palm of the run. Someone asked, is Jolted stack? No, so... When you hit an enemy with lightning right now, you'll see them get that electric effect. Now, when they go to attack us, they will receive some damage from Jolted, and Jolted will immediately wear off. You have to hit them with lightning again in order for Jolted to get applied again. So it's only going to hit them once at that moment. Now, there's a dual boon that I say is not very strong, personally, called... What is it called? Cold Fusion, I think? Demeter Zeus? Um, that makes it so Jolted does not wear off when the enemy attacks, but instead is just on a strict timer. It's a pretty weak duo boon, I think, overall. There, there's probably times where you should take it, but not many. Cast! Delicious. It's possible I should be upgrading the attack here. I'll be quite honest. I'm still kind of going all in on things to work out. Even if the build doesn't come together till the very end, it's probably still worth it. I have to look, I should look at the doors here. Is that the final? It is. I don't remember the middle shop because it's been so long because this run takes so long, but that's okay. Um, so we're low on health. We are at the final shop. We need to be careful of how we spend our money here. We need 150 and we're praying to our almighty lords, Demeter and Artemis, to please appear in that shop. Please. Please. Honey bunny. Please. Um, so in the meantime, yes, we need that health. Should be useful. Because buying that health could prevent us from losing a death defiance. And that's very important. We now have 41 gold to spend to stay above 150. Is it the cast or is it the attack damage? It's actually kind of tough. I think it's kind of tough. If you don't buy braid, I'm rioting. I think the braid is kind of fun here. It's kind of, it kind of depends. Are you good? If you were in the middle of doing this run, you'd have to ask yourself, are you good at using the cast and laying them down? Are you good? Are you actually good at it? Or are you kind of forgetting a lot and just dash striking all over the place like crazy? In which case it would be wrong to take the braid. You know what I mean? If you're good about laying down the cast, then you should do it. I said all in on the cast. Well, I am, but I, I just want to use the point of view of everyone else and play devil's advocate at moments. You know what I mean? All right. This is it. This is it. We really need this to happen. 
I'm going to be quite upset. I'm going to be quite upset. If we get offered a different green boon, whose name I shall not speak. Uh, in the middle of this run. Demeter, please. Hallowed be thy name. By kingdom come, till chill thee come. Yeah. Always a pleasure, Charon. That's a pog. <laughs> Fill the slots. <laughs> I think, um... So, <clears throat> excuse me. In this particular instance, stubborn roots would never be correct. You would never take this, take that over crystal clarity in this specific moment. I think as a new player, stubborn roots. I'm just trying again. Again, why would you, as a new player, pick this over stubborn roots potentially, if you're worried about dying? I think stubborn roots. It doesn't recover as much health as it might sound. Is the problem. If you're on your last Death Defiance, you gotta remember, a Death Defiance only restores 50% of your health, your max health. So you don't have a lot of time left. Uh, you don't have, you don't, if you're, if you've used your last Death Defiance, you recover 50% of your health, let's say you have 200, you have 100 health. You don't have a lot of time left in this world generally. You know what I mean? So Stubborn Roots, it's a pretty weak boon overall, I'd say. So Crystal Clarity, it's kind of hard to explain why it's good, because you might look at Crystal Beam before you get this boon and tell yourself nothing could make this good. You know? Nothing could make this good. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you say that, maybe you wouldn't. The tracking is what makes it good. The additional damage means nothing, practically. It's the tracking that actually matters. Because the tracking means that you can lay these beams, these bad boys down and just run around like a mad lad the rest of the fight, pick them up when they wear off, and just lay them back, and that's all you have to worry about. You can see how much faster they're moving right now. There are, And there are even more supplemental boons that you could get to make this more powerful. So this fight, there's a lot to say, to be honest. Oh boy. Normally I'd recommend trying to focus down the Minotaur first. And let Theseus come second. Try to just put a lot of space between you and Theseus while you focus on the Minotaur. Utilize the pillars to block line of sight with Theseus. Okay, I keep getting hit though. Ha. Huh. And just watch for that target upon yourself for when Theseus is about to throw the spear at you. Hyper Sprint helps a lot here. Oh boy. There. Now things get substantially easier. You can kind of calm down. Oh, come on! I got stuck on the pillar. Alright, this is a good opportunity to get in lots of damage where you can. Now, not every god is this easy to avoid. Dionysus happens to be one of the easier ones. In fact, probably the easiest. Uh, if I were to say. Losing a Death Defiance is kind of scary there. And that was with plus 50% cast damage from the Braid. So we're not feeling super strong. That shade there. Have I got a fan? Uh, the reason here is mostly because if you've seen, like, meme videos of me using, uh, Crystal Beam a lot and stuff like that, you see, like, things go down very quickly. It's usually because we're using a weapon aspect that increases our damage uh, for casts. And we don't have that right now. 
Uh, okay, so we leave everything the same here. Nothing we want to sell. Nothing here is useful. Well, yeah, no price of Midas, I don't think. I know we're broke, but... So close. Thank you. No Glacial Glare either. Glacial gar Glare would be nice. I don't know if it's really going to feel that much better, but it would be nice. That's another boon by... Uh, uh, Demeta. All right, so we have Athena here. However, I will probably never reach 450 gold again. We have Athena here. I was in Barb stream and uh, he had the he made the mistake of taking a regular chamber first. When you want to start with the mini bosses, usually. Now, mini bosses they just tend to be easier. You'll probably find this out on your own. The normal enemy encounters and sticks are just so painful. They're really painful. Even if you have if you have a lot of damage, if you don't have a lot of damage, it just they take so much longer. There's more opportunities for you to get hit. And yeah, I don't know. Something about them are just it's just terrible, really. So we probably start with Artemis. Then we take Athena's second. And I know that's a normal enemy encounter, but the sack can appear any time between chamber two and five. The more st chambers you take, the higher the odds that the sack is going to appear. It's like a 50. It's practically a 50 50 if you get it on the second path or not. I believe. What can Artemis do for us now? Well, let's see. Oh god, there's like a fruit fly in my eye. Come on. Come on, let's go. And remember kids don't use hazard bomb in the smallest room in the entire game. Yeah, that too. So you can stagger lock these enemies if you just keep hitting them. They're not going to be able to hit you back as long as they're not armored. It's fine. Uh, Artemis can give us a few things. Deadly Reversal is a duo boon that would be pretty helpful, I'd say, here. We can still get Lightning Rod, which is actually pretty good. It might even be better than trying to utilize Crystal Beam. It might be. I can't really say for certain. Woo! Use this middle pillar to try to avoid this thing from poisoning you. It does a little dash right before throwing out the darts each time. So you just want to make sure you're on the opposite side. As soon as you kill the mini boss, the ad stops spawning. So in sticks especially, you really want to make sure you kill the ads quickly. All right. So this is actually a tougher decision than normal because this gets into the logistics of call boons a lot i would say no rod yeah no rod clean kill is kind of bait i think clean kill is a i wouldn't call it overrated but it's a well marketed boon with a underwhelming effect uh plus 30 percent critical damage just is not that much and it's only when you crit being able to crit more often is way better. Is way better. You just gotta understand. Your crits do three times damage. So Hunter's Mark is an incredibly powerful boon. It's almost never wrong to take, no matter how low your your um your crit rate is, whether you just got it from pressure points or your attack or whatever. Hunter's Mark is almost always correct to take. Now, we are special though, chat. We are special indeed, let me tell you. <clears throat> Zeus on Chiron per special is a per arrow or per special. Neither. It has an internal cooldown that just simply manipulates how often the lightning can trigger. Uh, so we, you get like two per special, roughly, I think. Um, Artemis' is aid. I think it's often overrated. You would not generally want to use this unless you get a full call. It is extremely weak. Uh, just as a call that you use on the segmented occasion. However, chat, however, your call is charged based on three factors. How much damage you deal, how much damage you take, and how many hits you deliver. Believe it or not, chat, Crystal Beam 
hits a lot of times very rapidly. Um, I think this is actually the correct option. It wouldn't be wrong to take Hunter's Mark here. I think this could actually give us the damage output we need. It also allows us to play the build even safer, th safer than what we were doing. We can actually sit back even more so than before. Lay down the beams, let that char that uh, call charge up on its own, and then unleash all hell when time comes. A fully charged items call is a lot of damage. A single use, not a lot of damage. It's probably one of the worst single use calls in the game, I would venture to say. All right, so we take an Athena here. We're really, really, really hoping to get that Death Defiance pack here. The odds seem pretty high. I'm thinking about the Boon Pool. We we took Exposed earlier, thinning out what Athena can offer us. Afro Call beats it. I forgot about Afro Call. Yeah, Afro Call is probably the worst single-use one. I forgot about that. Yeah, don't take that. I don't even really like Afro's Call if you get a full one. Nail of Talus is not really worth it. I'm trying to think, if we get the sack here... Ethernet is a very cheap yet powerful upgrade, honestly. Don't say and don't buy the net. I think we buy the health either way. Because if this isn't the sack, I would really like to have the health. The only issue with buying this now is that A, it might not last to the Hades fight. B, it might disable me from buying full health in the shop. I'm going to go for it, though. Because I'm one gold short. Even this is if this is the sack right here, right now, it was not. There was a decent chance at a, uh... What do you call it? At a gold pot appearing in the room. Actually, do I even have gold pots unlocked? I'm not so sure. Don't remember. Go, beams! Okay. All right, we have our full call, but we want to wait a second here. There's going to be another wave of enemies. Here they come. Go, Atomish! It couldn't even kill one big rat. <laughs> it couldn't even kill one big rat. Oh... Oh no! Wow! <sighs> That's pretty bad. I just wanted the Death Defiance. We got... I guess there was another boon still. Bronze skin. Wow. That's terrible. Traps deal like 30 damage, right? I don't think it's proud bearing. Dad paw steal 30 damage, yeah. So that cuts it down a bit. It's hard to say with holy shield. It's down to sure footing or holy shield, I think. Okay, do list auto pick. If you had to take a mark, proud bearing couldn't show up, right? Correct. The odds seemed so high that we'd get a death defiance, I didn't really consider it. Yeah, this one's kind of preference. I don't know. If you know you're you're prone to getting hit by traps, I'd say take sure footing. Uh, if you've never even been to the Hades fight, I think take Holy Shield still. Because it prevents you from getting Wombo'd. And Hades does have some Wombo combos out there. Uh, 
it'd be a different story if like this was extreme measures four blah 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 but then you wouldn't be a new player and it kind of doesn't matter okay so now what i still don't think we'll ever reach 450 gold even if i take the gold room however if we're forced to take another path after this there's a chance we'll get a well offered which could potentially enable us to buy another death defiance and that's mostly what i'm trying to solve right now there's like a single fruit fly in my basement damn these single fruit flies um that's mostly what i'm concerned about it's hard to get much more damage right now. I really just want that Death Defiance back very, very badly. So I'm making sure I get all the gold pots I can find. Yep. It's usually wrong to do additional paths with the hope of uh, finding something outlandish in order to survive. I don't, I don't think it would be correct to do it. How many fruit flies does it take to screw in a light bulb? Oh god, what? Gods grant me strength. Uh... Hard part is getting I don't get it, Rindo. You're confusing me, Rindo. <laughs> I don't think any three of these are explicitly wrong. See ya, you pony you too. Have a nice day. Thank you. Um, I don't think any of these choices are very wrong. The attack is probably the just the easy choice that you don't really have to think about that much. It's probably not Curse of Vengeance ever. It is a big increase in damage, but it's probably not worth it. An extra 10% on Jolted slash the dash. I'm going to say the attack stronger. Double strike is fun. Yeah, double strike is the fun choice, admittedly. Um, and if we were just going for as much cheese as possible, you might want to take that instead. But yeah, we go now. I might lose. It's going to be a long fight. If you had Rod, it's safe for sure. Rod would be nice, huh? Rod would be nice. That's the spirit father. All right, don't spoil anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying my best. To the death. All right, so we lay out our cast, and we're just gonna see what Hades does here. So after Hades does this big spin move, that's when you have the most time to get some attacks in. Every other move he does has a what would you call it? A shorter cooldown before he uses another attack. The big spin is the one where you can really get some extra moves in. I'm just going to get these out ahead of time. They'll track later. So now I can get in some attacks here. Not too bad. Call's building up quite quickly. The special, you still would want to use the special a lot here. Because just being able to passively deflect in some way is very strong. Use it now, it's fine. Get the damage on Hades. Keep those beams out. No need to rush. Alright, when he's summoning, he goes impervious. So he has two invulnerability phases at, at each third of health. Here. Ooh. And he's going to summon random ads. Usually just like elite ads from Elysium mostly. Gotta dash through these greens. These green waves that come out. And you'll see it at the start of phase two here in a second. Woo! You can dash through the spin attack if you time it correctly, but that's just going to take practice and there's no amount of words I can say that will make it easier for you other than just practice it. So until you're comfortable. All right, so this green wave that comes out, 
You have to dash over it. There is no amount about doing it. Do not attack at the same time. If you try to dash attack through it, you will get hit. Because when you dash attack, instead of just regular dash, you lose what they call the iframes, the invincibility frames. Okay, I apparently can't manage to kill these. All right, here come the green pots. You can't destroy them like the second that they appear. You have to give it a, uh, a couple seconds. Oh, whoops, I used the call. Okay. It's not like, you don't necessarily have to. I just recommend clearing a safe spot for yourself more than anything. So you don't have to clear up every single base and every single nook and cranny. You just want a space that you know you can go to safely, especially for this. So you can actually hug dad through that. I don't recommend it as a new player yet. You can get up close to dad without extreme measures on. and hug them through the process. It's kind of finicky. I don't, that's why I don't recommend it. It's not like you practice enough and you will literally never get hit. No, it's like sometimes you're still gonna get hit when you go for the hug. So just use these pillars. I recommend just focusing on one. Boom, get the kill, done. Focus on one side of the map here, I'd say, mostly. Clear the pots on one side, dance around one of the two pillars that are in the room and just use those to line of sight things, basically. All right, that's our overexplained sword run. It's weird? It was weird. No one was expecting Crystal Beam, or were they? I don't know, maybe they were. God, I talked so much. 34 in-game time minutes, nice, huh? Luna, thank you for the Prime, welcome back. Thanks for the two months. Burn Streak 7, all right. How to an underexplained run? That's like most of my stream otherwise. But yeah. Feel free to ask questions. I really I really liked uh fielding questions for this and stuff. What were the most helpful things here? Hyper Sprint was quite important. Curse of Vengeance was not. Crystal Clarity. Crystal Beam. Jolt had probably delivered a lot of damage. It's hard to tell exactly how much, but I bet it delivered a lot. Magus, welcome back. Thank you for the two months. The call was okay. It wasn't like the most amazing thing ever, I gotta say. All right, that's that. I guess we didn't need that Death Defiance, huh, chat?